Hello again. We are starting a new unit. This is unit number 11. We're going to be talking about exponential functions and other functions uh, in this unit. Uh, but for right now, we're going to focus our attention on the exponential functions and their graphs. This is lesson 11.1, so let's get started. Um, if you have an exponential function, it's one, um, well, we'll talk about what they look like. The exponential part of this function is the part that says 2 to the x. So whenever your variable is in the exponent, that's called an exponential function. So let's say I have f of x equals 2 to the x minus 3. If I wanted to know what f of 4 was, I would simply replace the x with 4, and I would get 2 to the 4 minus 3, which works out to be 16 minus 3, which is 13. f to the negative 2 would be 2 to the negative 2 minus 3, which is 1 fourth minus 3, which is negative 2 and 3 fourths. And f to the 0 would be 2 to the 0 minus 3, which is 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So just giving you an idea of how to plug x's into those functions. Okay, so when we graph them, um, we're going to start out with the uh, apparent function, which is 2 to the x. Here's a table of values. So when x is negative 3, f of x is 1 eighth. When x is negative 2, f of x is 1 fourth, and so on down the table. So here's what the graph looks like. Okay, so there's your graph of 2 to the x. All right, and what I want you to notice is there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. The function uh, will get closer and closer to 0 as you go to the left, as, as x gets very, very negative. Uh, you'll get closer and closer to 0, uh, but you'll never actually get there um, because I can't raise 2 to any exponent and get 0 as my answer. All right, now let's talk about how I can move that graph around. The first way is by vertical translation. So you see there's our uh, parent graph, the blue one, and then the red one is that same graph shifted up by 3, and the green one um, is the original graph shifted down by 3. So the blue graph is our y equals 2 to the x. Um, the red graph is y equals 2 to the x plus 3. And the green one is y equals 2 to the x minus 3. Okay, And then we can translate it horizontally as well. Now the red graph is the one that has been shifted 3 units to the right, or sorry, to the left. And the green one is the graph that has been shifted 3 places to the right. So my blue one is still y equals 2 to the x. Now notice when I'm shifting left, the exponent becomes x plus 3. So it's the opposite of what you would think it would be. And then the green one is y equals 2 to the x minus 3. So those are horizontal translations. Vertically stretching or compressing, um, the blue one is still y equals 2 to the x. Um, but what I've done to create the red one is I've stretched it by a factor of 3. So that is 3 times 2 to the x, and what I've done to create the green one is I've actually divided the function by 3 or multiplied it by 1 third. So that's how you can stretch or compress um, those graphs vertically. If I want to do the same thing horizontally, then again, there's the blue one. It's y equals 2 to the x. Now to create the, um, the red one, what I did was I multiplied the exponent by 3, so that actually makes it a little steeper. And then to get the green one, which is not as steep, I divided the exponent by 3. So what you can tell is if I want to compress it, I actually have to multiply the exponent by something. And if I want to stretch it horizontally, I've got to divide the exponent by something. So again, since we're dealing with x, it's the opposite of what you think it would be. All right, reflecting. The blue one is still y equals 2 to the x. Uh, to get the red one, it's been flipped over the x-axis, so I negate the whole function. So I got y equals negative 2 to the x. If I just negate the x part, that's how I get the green graph. Um, so that's the graph of y equals 2 to the negative x. Okay, And it's actually the same thing as 1 half to the x. So that's something worth noting and uh, making a relationship about. And that means that the blue one is actually y equals 1 half to the negative x. So both the green one and the blue one have two, two um, seemingly different equations associated with them, but they both create the same graph. The two blue equations create the same graph, and the two, red, or the two green equations create the same graph. 
All right, um, now using technology to solve an equation like this, let's say I had the equation 3 to the x equals 100, and I wanted to know what I would have to raise 3 to to get 100. Well, I know that 3 to the 0 is 1, 3 to the 1 is 3, 3 to the 2 is 9, 3 to the 3 is 27, 3 to the 4 is 81, which is pretty close. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than 4. Not quite 5, though, because 3 to the 5 would be 243, and that's too big. So I know my answer has to be somewhere between 4 and 5, but I don't know uh, my decimal exponents of 3, certainly. So what I'm going to do is the left side of the equation is going to go into y1, and the right side is going to go into y2. And I'm going to find the point of intersection. So I graph both of them, and I use uh, the solving capabilities of my calculator, and I see where those two intersect. And it looks like they intersect at an x value of 4.19, which is between 4 and 5, just like I thought it would be. So the x um, solution for that equation is x equals 4.19. So that is a um, pretty thorough introduction of exponential equations and what to do with them, how to translate them, how to uh, solve equations using technology. Uh, if you have any questions about any part of this, please let me know and I will see you tomorrow.